What is up all of you awesome and amazing people on YouTube? The old coot here coming at you with another exciting video. Eggs in a stainless steel pan. I'm just going to quickly recap what I did here so that you kind of get an idea of if you're doing this for the first time, some tips or tricks, things that the pros do to cook in stainless steel and not have any stickage. As you can see, I just took my eggs out. I got some like minor little specks and crumbs there, but as you can see, there's no burned area. There's no sticky areas, nothing. Everything came out clean. So just trying to walk everybody through this process. Go back in the videos that I posted before about the light and frost effect. That's very important. What it is, is you'll, you'll get to know your pan and how it commingles with your range or your stovetop in terms of temperature. Temperature is the key, is like one of the main foundation keys or building blocks to not getting stickage when you're making eggs in a stainless steel pan. It doesn't matter if you're doing scrambled eggs, an omelet, or eggs over easy, sunny side up, you name it, it's all the same. It's just temperature of the pan is crucial. To quickly recap, try to use, this is a 10 inch all clad D3 stainless steel pan. You get the idea. I'll put a link down below in the description, by the way. Pretty much the pan of choice that I like to use. I might go a little smaller size, like an eight inch or a six inch. If I'm only making like one or two eggs, you know, there's no reason to use a whole big pan like this. But anyways, one of the key factors is obviously the temperature. So when you're setting your temperature knob, there's high, medium, and low. I try to go between medium and low and just over, like if you took medium and low, just over what the halfway point would be towards the medium side, to me seems to be the best, at least for my range and my pan, the stainless steel pan. Also, try to use the biggest burner you have because that distributes the heat more evenly. You get a more even surface of heat so that there's no cold spots and there's no extremely hot spots like in one area. If the more you can distribute the heat across the entire pan, the better your results will be. So that's the first key. The second key is when you do put your pan on the heat, you have to let it do its thing for at least minimum one minute and don't rush that process. If you can go to two minutes, it's even better. If you can go to three minutes, even better than that. You want that pan, because it's a D3, that means that there's three layers of metal in there. There's stainless steel, a, a layer of aluminum, and then there's another layer of stainless steel. So you want you want the entire pan to be evenly heated and warm and ready to go. The light and frost effect is basically what you would do is you would take a drop or two of water, put it in there, and if it sizzles right away and just dissipates, the pan's too cold. If you put your drop of water in there and it explodes like firecrackers, the pan's too hot. If you put your drop of water in there and it rolls around like a bead, right? Like a little ball of water just rolling around the pan, that means you're at the perfect temperature. Dump out the water, then you're going to need to lube up. So it's either going to be olive oil, like I love this thing, this Evo oil sprayer, because I can put my extra virgin olive oil Evo in this sprayer and just get an even spray across the entire pan. Usually two or three sprays of this is about like less than a tablespoon. And it just, it just evenly coats like one swoosh there and one swoosh here. And I evenly coated the entire pan. Then what I'll do is I'll wait maybe another like 10 seconds or so, and then put my eggs in. Okay. With that being said, it's when you're doing this for the first time, it's almost like, it's almost like cheating if you take your eggs out about a half an hour before you're ready to cook them. The reason is because think about the think about the scientific logic here, right? Your pan is warm, your pan is hot. Why would you put cold eggs from the fridge into that pan? You're going to create a temperature imbalance and the eggs are going to stick. So if you take your eggs out about a half an hour before you're ready to cook them, you give your eggs a chance to kind of come up to room temperature or at least just better than the 36 or 40 degree temperature that was in your fridge, right? So to recap, use the biggest burner you have. Try to keep your heat between medium, right? Keep your heat between medium and low, kind of in the middle, but leaning more towards the medium side. Let your stainless steel pan heat up for at least, at least a minute. Two minutes would be better. Two and a half to three minutes would be ideal. 
Put a good amount of fats or butter in there. You could use, like I said, if you don't want to use the olive oil spray, I'll put a link to this down below in the description, by the way, and to, and to the pan down in the description. But you could use butter. Like a tablespoon of butter is perfect. If, if you're just going to put the olive oil in or vegetable oil or whatever you use to cook, like whatever fat you use or whatever, that's fine. Cheat, right? Instead of just putting one tablespoon, put two tablespoons. Just in the beginning, just till you get used to the process, then you'll, after doing it a few times or 10 times or 15 times, you'll kind of get used to like, okay, I only need one tablespoon of oil for, for your specific situation, your range, your all clad, your stainless steel pan, whatever you're using. You kind of get the idea. So then once your eggs go in, don't touch them. That's another thing too, is if you, once your eggs go in there, whether they're whether they're, you know, whipped up like you're going to make scrambled eggs or an omelet or whether it's just the whole egg going in there like you're going to make sunny side up or or over easy, over hard, whatever the case may be. Let them sit for at least a good maybe 10 seconds before you start futzing. Like if you're going to make scrambled eggs, let them sit for at least 10 seconds. Let that let that coating of the egg coat and separate from the pan through the process of heat and the light and frost, light and frost effect, light and fragrant legerhoden, right? Whatever, however you pronounce it, let that happen. Then go ahead and futz with it. Another tip or trick is try to use silicone based, right? Utensils. Don't ever go in there with a piece of metal because if you go in there with a piece of metal, guess what? You're scraping that oil that's acting as the barrier between the pan and your eggs and you could get a stickage point. But if you use silicone, like the silicone OXO Good Grips tongs, right? Is that what they are? Yep, OXO Good Grips. I think this is like the nine and a half, ten 10 inch size, something like that. Go ahead and just, just move the egg gently. You'll get some kind of like folding sheet kind of effect where it's going to fold in on itself and just keep moving that around, right? Just very gentle, gentle. Let it cook. Let it do its thing. Then when you're ready to flip, and you need like a spatula type thing, again, try to use, like this is another OXO Good Grips, right? This is OXO Good Grips. This is one style of their spatulas. Then go in there and do your flip. When, when you feel like enough of the runniness has come out, like kind of at the point where it's almost dry, but it's not really, then go ahead and flip your eggs. Or, or if you can do the whole hand flip thing where you can do the whole restaurant style, whoop, and do the flip, do, go ahead and do that. Once they flip, let them rest. Let them rest for about five, 10 seconds because now you need that side of your omelet or scrambled eggs or whatever. You need that side to get a chance to cook and then separate again from the pan. And then you can go ahead and jiggle and wiggle, turn it into a hockey puck on ice, you know, do that kind of thing. If you're going to be doing scrambled eggs, like true scrambled eggs, you can just go ahead and keep moving them around, but just gentle. There's no reason to be forceful or, or aggressive or whatever. If you start getting stickage, it, it's one of two things, and, and everybody's situation is different. You're going to have to experiment on your own, and you're, you're going to have to break some eggs to make an omelet. That's how it works. But you know, if, you're in a, if, you're, if it's morning and you're in a rush, don't do it at that time. <laughs> eat something else or, to eat some, or just make the eggs the way you normally make them. But try to do this when you have time to experiment. And you, you could do one egg at a time if you want to try that way. But what you what's going to happen is, is if you start getting egg stickage, the most likely culprit is that usually you're too hot or you're too cold. And that's where you're going to have to experiment. You're going to have to try it. What you could do, the first sign of stickage, is go ahead and hit it with some more oil. Right, like in that one sticky spot or around the sticky spot, maybe separate out the egg that's around that sticky spot. Hit it with maybe one more squirt of oil if you have one of these, or put in maybe like a quarter of a tablespoon of butter, just something to kind of give you that lube action again to make it release so that you don't get a burn brown spot on your pan or whatever. So, temperature is too high or temperature is too low when you get stickage, or it could be the lack of oil or butter maybe you didn't put in enough you know you kind of get the idea that's why i'm saying like when you first do this cheat just use more oil than you think you need just to kind of then you can kind of dial it back and say okay i need less of this less of this less of this right like less butter less oil and then and then you can start fussing around with the temperature anyways you kind of get the idea but that's basically the process and then when you when you feel like your eggs are at a doneness level that you like like for me this is how i like my eggs usually 
they're kind of they're kind of dried out because they've been sitting here but usually there's like a little bit of moisture left right see that glistening shine right here where the fork is that's usually how i like them i don't necessarily do a scramble it's more like a quasi omelet thing going on but that's usually how i like my eggs and that's how i cook them and that's how i have found that they cook the best in this pan on this stove top you kind of get the idea so anyways experiment try different things take your time with it buy a dozen eggs do one egg at a time do it when you have the time as well it's very important but the three i would say the three or four main things to consider are use the biggest burner you have Try to keep your heat between medium and low, kind of nudging towards the more towards the medium side than the low side. Let your pan heat up. Very important. It's got to heat up one minute, two minute, three minute is ideal. Maybe somewhere around two minutes is good. And then always try to put whatever you're going to cook in the pan. Always try to put it, the, cook, the item that you're going to cook... It's ideal if it's at room temperature or somewhere close to room temperature. Just take it out a half an hour before you're ready to cook it. And then the last tip, I guess that's five, right? Is that right? Five? Yes? No? I don't know. Comment in the comment section below if I got it right. The fifth tip would be you have to use oil. Oil or butter or something in that pan to act as a, as a buffer layer between the pan and whatever it is you're putting in. Olive oil is what I like to use, extra virgin olive oil. You could use vegetable oil. You could do whatever you want to use, put it in there. Hope this helps someone out there. I will put links to all the stuff that I showed you today down there below in the description, so make sure to check that out. I'm the old coot. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll catch you all in the next exciting video.